live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live Europe. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Barcelona. This is Cisco Live 2019, and you're watching theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host Dave Vellante, and John Furrier is here. Three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage, and we are absolutely thrilled to welcome to the program, first time, uh, the CIO of Cisco, Guillermo Diaz Jr., also a senior vice president. Thank you so much for joining us. Good uh, thanks you. for having me. Uh, uh, what's your kind of key priority today, some of the big challenges that you're focused on, Guillermo? Yeah, so I think the key challenges are really around. I, I would say, for me, it, it starts, it, it's in between, and it ends with the people. Mm -hmm. And I think you, it's the cultural shift that ha it happens along this journey as well. So a lot of folks is, yeah, we're IT. We're the leaders in technology in the company. And I think moving from that back office to now every business, the foundation of which, if you're going to be a digital company, is technology. So who in the company is the best suited to really help that conversation is IT. So IT is now becoming part of the business transformation of every business, whether you're in technology like myself, whether you're oil and gas, whether you're in retail, whether you're in finance, et cetera. Technology's driving the digital business transformation. So it's really about how not, we not only use technology, but what is the, what is the impact on our processes? How we digitize, if you will. But more importantly is how do you bring the people, how do you cultivate the best people and talent so that you can actually move up the stack? And it's not easy for someone that's been hugging routers for many, <laughs> many years, and now you tell them, hey, you have to do drive programmability. And they're like, well, what does that mean? Well, you have to learn Python yeah. and Ansible. And, and code that now infrastructure. Now, <laughs> now you need to code this thing because you need to provide that that thing that you that you provided in eight weeks, now you have to provide it in eight minutes. Right. And that's a that's a big shift in mindset as well. Yeah. So Guillermo, I, I know that STEM is a is a is a passion of yours. Oh Maybe yeah. talk to us a little bit about that, that that pipelining. We love you know large technology companies like Cisco as to how do you get down to you know not just the universities but even uh, yeah. so, so some of the more elementary schools and uh, help make yeah. sure that they're ready so that when we're not sitting here saying I've got thousands of jobs and nobody that is prepared to take that that, that yeah. job. Well, again, when you when you think about what you just said with STEM. Well, what are you cultivating? You're cultivating the pipeline of people. And the more people that you have in that, you know, trained up in those technologies. And a lot of, you know, we, we do a lot with, with not only universities, but even below, even before university. We have a program that we, a work study program that we have in Cisco IT. And we have several partners, one of which is called Cristo Rey you know, uh, Academy. And what we do is, part of the curriculum is four days a week you go to school, one day a week you work at Cisco. And these are kids from 14 years old to 17, 18. And they are learning now, some of these kids come from, you know, from really low income or, or you know, underserved communities. And now they're coming in and they're learning about, oh, how do I set up a, a wireless infrastructure? How do I set up a telepresence environment? And when they walk out, they're like, you know, they're not only going to a, a university that they never thought of going to, like Cornell or like Humboldt State or whatever it might be, but they also have this skill. They also have this experience because now you're putting them in an environment and they're like sponges. And it's, a, it's amazing what, what we can do. And now you fast forward that into a university pipeline. We bring in about, you know, in Cisco IT and broadly across Cisco many more, but 200 university hires every, every year. And, and they, you know, they're providing, you know, instant value because they're challenging us they're like us dinosaurs. I don't like to think of myself as a dinosaur, but I've been there 19 years. And sometimes I think a certain way and I have to unlearn some things. And when I hear these people talk, I'm learning and I'm relearning things. 
and I'm unlearning some things. Well, if you surround yourself with millennials and gamers, you do learn new things. Yeah, right? you, you learn new, new ways of thinking, new design thinking methodologies and I, whatnot. I want to ask right? you about the organization. When we get uh, the CIOs of, of large technology companies on, a lot of times you guys have implemented best practice and if we get a lot of questions around, what's the right organization? Like for instance, do you guys have a chief data officer? Do you yeah, have one? So, so what is the right organization? Well, do you have a chief data officer? And First, I, thought, I don't know that is, there's a is right that a, organization. You know, right, I put that in right? quotes. But so, do you have a, a CDO? Yeah. And, and so, then, where does that CDO fit in the organization? What's your relationship with her or him? Yeah, so, so why I say there's not a right organization <laughs> is we didn't have uh, a real focus on data. Mm -hmm. Data was the database crew, the people that did the big data platform, and one of the evolutions we did in about 2015, we actually brought data up to uh, the CIO level. And we said that you know, that was going to be a strategic pillar along with how do we simplify, how do we automate, how do we get the data insights to be able to make decisions and then secure our business. Those are the five pillars of our digital strategy. So data and the insights was the big key strategic um, pillar for us. But what we, you know, and so that helped us really start to accelerate our agile motion into, you know, and, and as we learned in the last year, we actually elevated that role. We actually moved it from IT into the next level of operations. So it's a peer level. So, it's, you, so right? now we, we've taken that role from my team, which was the uh, chief data, uh, now the, it's the chief data officer named Shanti Iyer. And Shanti was at working in my team and now she's working under the COO because we believe that data is such a critical asset. You know, it's, the, it's the oil, it's the fuel of the business. Yeah. You know, it's the foundation. So we've elevated it up to that level and now That's awesome. uh, really driving it from a business perspective. Right. Uh, Camero, uh, we, we've seen cloud go through a lot of changes both as an industry as well as Cisco's relationship to what you've been building and where you've been partnering. How's that impacting things on the IT side? Oh, I think cloud is, you know, it's interesting, like, you know, I get to talk to many of my peers, like every day I'm talking to one of my peers and many of us go, you know, well, we have a cloud first strategy or we have a, a cloud strategy. And a lot of times we go, we, we have a cloud strategy, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> what's up in that? What's, because if you think about it, the cl cloud is in some data center somewhere. And, but, but the impact on that is pretty tremendous because there's so many now clouds. Whether, yeah, and they come in the form of SaaS, they come in the form of infrastructure as a service. And so you have to sort of put a, put a wrapper around it or it could get out of control. And, um, and for us, we have a, what we call a multi-cloud strategy. Luckily, we learned cloud early on and we initially called it virtualization, yeah. right? <laughs> so we automated network compute and storage and that wasn't good enough because then we needed to automate the application uh, uh, infrastructure level and then we needed to automate how we actually deliver. So as we moved up the stack, we learned how to virtualize or fast forward how to cloudify our environment. So we grew up in our private cloud and then we extended that to, okay, now you can go and provision if you need to. You can provision public cloud services if you want to do you know, um, experimentation or what it, whatever the use case might be. But cloud is now changing the business. We have to move fast. But at the same time, you have to be secure. Because we have, at Cisco, just to give you an idea, we have 442 applications in the cloud. The question is, how, does the, how do you stitch those together? How do you make them secure? Because data is traversing across that. So it's really about cloud, data, and security all in one wrapper that you have to be thinking Enforcing about. Enforcing that consistent policy, yeah. the corporate edicts. So it's interesting, you talk about multi-cloud. We saw this week a number of announcements from Cisco around multi-cloud. ACI Anywhere, uh, Hyperflex uh, you know, at, at the edge. Uh, over the years we've seen innovations around, we were talking about this before, programmable infrastructure. Yep. Are you a Petri dish for those products coming to market? We're a Kava. 
We, yeah, we, we drink yeah. our own kava. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, not dog food. In the show, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't like dog food. Yeah, we like kava. Um, so we call ourselves Customer Zero. And so yeah. at, at this, the, first, the first order of battle, though, is we have to run our business. We're running a $50 billion mm -hmm. business. And that's the first order of battle. The second is, oh, by the way, can we use our own, what we're talking about here, to run that $50 billion business? And that's sort of our multiple hats that we wear. We're the enabler, but we're also a large consumer. And being able to put that together, we call it customer zero. We used to say we're the first and best customer, but for us, that's too late. So we, took, we said we need to be customer zero. We need to be the first to take on some of these solutions and products so that we can you know, provide feedback to our engineering teams, our sales teams, our services teams. But more importantly, how do, we be, how do we become the reference? And we have an IT management program going on right now where we're talking about a lot of these things to 800 customers in for, for a three-day period. So those are the kinds of things that we do. Mm. Yeah, right. so we'd love to hear you using the products. Uh, we're here in the DevNet zone, and we've been hearing a lot over the last you know, four or five years. Yeah. Susie, we and the team. How my does that She's my other partner in crime. Great, yeah. so, so, so talk about how the, the developer movement, DevNet specifically, DevSecNet, uh, you know, how that impacts your business. Yeah, so again, if you go back to programmability, if you go back to cloud, it's all about, uh, it's all about having the ability to put all of these components together and you know so that so that we can all be productive and the the you know the the skill of the future is how do i program this how do i make all these things work in the easiest way and through its coding and you know you look around here and there's coding classes there's basic coding classes and a lot of times the network engineer goes well why do i need to do that and you start to, you know, you start to influence them to say, well, you need to move up the stack. You need to be the one that actually provides an infrastructure in five seconds versus five weeks. And in order to do that, you need to develop these new skills. And what Susie and the team have done with DevNet has provided a platform for all of us around the world to be able to learn these things and you know, not just become the network engineer, but become the orchestrator of these capabilities, right? When you think about your uh, portfolio, you've obviously got an application portfolio, you've got 400 plus applications in SaaS, and many, many more, I'm sure, on-prem. On we like to think of this framework of run the business, grow the business, transform the business. And, and I wonder if you could, uh, first of all, does that framework make sense? It's simple, obviously, but how do you think about your business in terms of running, growing, and transforming, and how you allocate resources to those three areas? I think, the, I think that's been the historical legacy model. And I think when you, when you start to segment it that way, you start to segment innovation as well. Because in run the business, as an example, we hear, maybe you heard this term AI ops, mm -hmm. right? What is, what is the future of operations? Well, the future of operations is how do I take all of these monitoring tools that I have, the same thing I've done with, with, my, with network compute and storage. How do I stitch them together so that I can actually correlate where an issue is. In order to do that, what we've done is we've taken our operation team and we've now deployed them into the development teams. And this is the devs, we not, not call it DevOps, it's called it DevSecOps. Mm -hmm. Because at the same time, we want you to have a mindset of security first. Think about, as you're developing, think about security as you go through the process. So now the operator, the one that used to actually sit there and watch the thing go, no, no, I want you to actually be the coder so that the problem that you're looking for, that you're waiting for, that you're helping solve that proactively and that you get new skills as well. So the same thing with the network engineer, the operations person now is learning about Python and Ansible and how to stitch the, the infrastructure, the application, the data, all of that into more of a monitoring system, right? So what I'm hearing is you're taking that notion of run the business, grow the business, transforming the business, bring it together, yes. and everybody's responsible for running the business, growing the business, and transforming and, the business. And you're responsible for innovation. So it's a continuous innovation model yeah. versus a stovepipe segmentation model. Continuous innovation, model. continuous improvement, continuous learning. Right. 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 Guillermo, I want to give you the, the final word. Here we are at the beginning of 2019. When you talk to your peers, the CIOs out there, whether it be at you know, tech, enterprise, startups, 
What are some of the you know, biggest challenges, big op biggest opportunities that are on their plate? Yeah, I, I think it's, um, there, we're in an interesting time in, in, in IT, in, in the world, where technology is foundational to every business. So my, my, sort of my call to action is, there's one organization in the company, in every company, that knows technology, and that's IT. And they know the infrastructure, and they know the apps. So the, the more that we can put those together into helping solve the digital, the secure digital business transformation, and not just talking about it from a technology perspective, but how do we use that to really articulate and translate that into business outcomes? And there's a lot in that. And how do we use our own technology? How do we change our skills? How do we unlearn some things? to relearn how to communicate with the business so that we could learn to go faster. Right. Yep. Guillermo Diaz Jr., thank you so much for sharing the viewpoint of Cisco and, and the, the changing role of the CIO. Uh, Dave Vellante and I will be back with lots more coverage here from Cisco Live 2019 in Barcelona, Spain. Thanks so much for watching theCUBE.